Every Bratz movie has at least one of these characteristics. It's unhinged. It's obscene. It's a cinematic masterpiece. When I get my hands on Dylan. Ugh. However, there is the rare gem that fits into all three of these categories. And lucky for us, we're going to be discussing one of those today. Ugh, touching me, touching me. And I have a little short announcement. It's very short, it's very short. I do have a Patreon now. If you would like to join the community, we have a little discussion. We roast the memes. It's fun, it's fresh. Who cares if she's exciting, fresh, and fun? Please. She sounds like a deodorant. No pressure. I don't even know why I mentioned it. Anyway, we're going to keep talking about Brad's Good Fairy Tales. Let's get into it. Yes, I know my background looks heinous. Oh. I'm going to girlify it eventually. The intro song really sets the pace and the tone for the rest of the film. A lot of you have said that the intro song to this movie is supreme. Took some time to figure out I shouldn't judge mm. I'm going to have to disagree with that. I'm going to be the judge of that and I'm going to judge. <laughs> judge says, I don't like it. I have an open mind towards these movies and I understand the tone. I understand the context, but this one didn't hit for me. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. However, we all know with the Bratz movies, they are going to make it up. You know, where they lack in some places, they're going to do, um, what's lack? Surplus? Lack cinnamon? Cinnamon? <laughs> Hey Siri, what is an antonym to lack? Antonyms for lack include abundance, abundance. and sufficiency. Thank you. I didn't make him a British man, it came like that. And that abundance is usually in the transitions, the hair, <gasps> and lucky for us, sound effects. Since right now I've been there, yeah. The bullets aboard. We have a little cool effect on there and that's fun and they have a cool sound effect. So that makes up for the song already. See what I mean? That, you know, I'm not that mad about the song. I will say the song is bad and it's not funny bad. Like sometimes there's funny bad in these movies. This isn't good. Oh, I feel like some of you are going to come for me for that. Hold the phone before you leave any comments, okay? Because sometimes opinions can change, okay? Let's just hold the comments until the end. Hold your thoughts. Write it down make notes. So basically what is going on is the core four are going to be in a play playing different fairy tale characters. So Sasha is going to be Little Red Riding Hood. Yasmin's going to be Cinderella. Jade's going to be Snow White and Chloe's going to be Rapunzel. The problem is, is they don't respect the characters they're playing at all. Sasha roasts Little Red Riding Hood. Her grandmother's got fur, sharp teeth, and whiskers. Run, you little goof. She's a wolf. Have we not fact-checked that grandma's not actually a furry the whole time? So Jay's roasting Snow White, and she's like, why would I cook and clean for seven guys? No, thank you. Her critiques of Snow White were actually pretty fair. However, she didn't respect her at all. Try playing wimpy Cinderella sometime. When did we stop using the term wimpy is what I'm wondering. Wimpy is such a good insult. You're wimpy. Hmm. Okay. Writing that down. I think I win. Rapunzel? First of all, how about a name change? <sighs> Something about Chloe is she's not going to match the vibe often. I am warming up to Chloe the more I interact with Chloe in the world. Rapunzel is a cool name. Everyone knows that, Chloe. <laughs> After their absolute roast session, this dog with glass, dog, <laughs> frog, was that not a dog the whole time? This frog with glasses shows up who sounds like they smoke a pack a day. The keeper of fairy tale lore has heard your scorn for words and frankly is quite saddened. The world cannot be cynical about fairy tales because if the world becomes cynical, cynical if the world becomes cynical about fairy tales, then fairy tales won't exist and people stop like believing in them, even though it's a fairy tale and like, people don't really... I guess that's the reason for the whole movie. So Chadwick explains that he was once a handsome prince that just got turned into a regular old brog. To be honest, I think even if Chadwick was a handsome prince, I think with that voice, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. For I was boasting how I could do so much better than the fair- I don't know, actually. Chadwick is like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta fix this. The kingdom's gonna fall. I don't know what's happening. There's like a, a whole issue. And Jade's like, okay, what are we supposed to do about it? And then they zap into the fairy tale book. And then they are just falling from the sky for kind of a long time. And it feels very Spy Kids too. And they land and they're completely fine. But why is Chadwick looking kind of... 
what we're learning in the plot at this point is the keeper basically thinks that these four girlies need to put some respect on rapunzel little red riding hood cinderella and uh snow white's name it's hard to remember four chadwick's like oh you think you can do better than the og queens okay perfect because you're gonna actually be doing that you're going to be put it into their shoes if they don't solve everything by midnight of course they're gonna be stuck in the fairy tale land forever and chadwick's going to stay a regular frog forever and everything's just gonna be bad it's not gonna be good for them they have to start cracking the code here first up we have chloe you come with me She's Rapunzel with a little rat tail. I don't know who designed the hair on this. Usually they slay the hair in the Brat Cinematic Universe. What happened? What, what happened to the rest of the hair? They could have done more with the hair knowing Brat's history with hair. I just, it was a little disappointed by the Rapunzel hair. I'm sorry. And also I'm like, okay, so if you start disrespecting and saying you can do things better than other fairy tale girls, I could do better than Disney Rapunzel specifically if we had a pick. Huh? The girls are like, oh, we're dreaming. Let's do a circle pinch never done that before Ow! not opposed to it either so chloe's cooking up ideas how can i escape she's like well i'll just walk out the door so chloe runs out the door like a million times and i thought this part was actually pretty upbeat and cool nice shot And the montage, of course, was way too long because they want to play the song longer. So they just kept reusing the same scene as she's going through the tower. She can't escape through the door, of course. Rapunzel probably tried that. Okay, so then she starts thinking of another idea. Oh, she goes, what if I throw my hair above that perfect thing above the window? And what is it called when you do this? Whatever this is down the tower you are smarter than rapunzel it works she gets out <laughs> however the crow there's always a crow who is a snitch tells the witch ah. rapunzel's attempting to escape and this is all happening while the witch turns goldilocks into a stump weirdly important character in this movie so the witch shows up super eerily <laughs> and tells Chloe, you're not leaving. And she takes out her wand and holds it like Voldemort. And Chloe's like, oh, I'll ride your broom up. No worries. How about a ride up on your broom? <laughs> what a devious trick by the witch to just jerk it back like that. That was such a trickster move. And then she just climbs back in the tower. How is she climbing? back into the tower can someone explain this to me so we cut back to our three girlies who are looking for chloe and yasmin sits on goldilocks and goldilocks is like hello you're sitting on me and they're like oh i'm sorry and goldilocks keeps like blowing hair out of her face but i'm the one who tp that old lady who lives in the shoe it happens so many times yeah long story and they just don't comment on it which i think is kind of comedic genius if you ask me and Goldilocks is a homie and just tells them where the witch is and the tower. And they kind of get caught up on everything that's going on. So they head over to the tower. Meanwhile, Chloe and the witch are playing checkers. The punishment will be... <gasps> checkers! The witch likes to be entertained by Chloe, so she keeps her alive, doesn't turn her into a stump or anything, so that she can play checkers with the witch. Chloe makes, like, one move. Then she eyes the wand, and she's like, oh, I can take that and do some crazy things. She's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. And the witch is like, cool. No worries. And then Chadwick takes a bite out of the witch's ankle. Ow! Well, that sounded like a nasty bite. Chloe grabs the wand, and she's like, I'm gonna win Guardian Leviosa, your ass. And then she realizes that the wand doesn't work because the witch is a witch, so she's magical. The wand is probably just a helpful little tool. So the witch takes it back, and she's like, okay, I'm gonna kill you now. You in the spot. So the crow has them all wrapped up and about to die over this nasty-looking stew. And the witch is like, this needs onions. So she goes and turns Rumpelstiltskin into an onion. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, put me back. As this is all happening, the three girlies show up and the witch is like, what are you guys doing here? And then they have this crazy battle. Then Sasha grabs the broom. She starts riding the broom, which I'm confused. Does the broom not require magical powers, only the wand? So Sasha's riding the broom. She saves Chloe and Chadwick. They throw the broom and the wand into the little pot. And, and the witch is having a mental breakdown. Oh. 
And then the crow takes the witch and is like, I'm sick of you telling me what to do and puts her in the tower. Okay, so case closed. Let's move on. So now the onion is looking for the girlies <laughs> and meets up with the stump that is Goldilocks and is like, where are the girlies? And Goldilocks is like, I think they went that way. And Rumpelstiltskin is like, okay. At this point, Sasha is still roasting the fairy tale girlies, which you wouldn't catch me doing that after learning that I would be stuck in the fairy tale world forever. It was because they were up against lame heroines. As this character that I don't respect, I would just maybe have a more of an open mind, but. So now the huntsmen are coming after Jade and she's running away, she's about to die. And then she runs into this beautiful little house. Her and Chadwick hide in the house. And of course, the seven gnomes, I mean dwarves. Why do they look like gnomes? What is the history? What makes these seven dwarves so special? Is they're insanely misogynistic. You? <laughs> in a band? A girl? This is the world they're living in. So now it makes sense why nobody wanted to stay here. Like fairy tale land sounds so great in theory until you realize it's a hellscape. And one of them says something so cutthroat. You're funny. Well, when you're finished with your delusion, you can start picking up around the place. Like, even Chadwick was shocked. <laughs> Chadwick's like, maybe you should listen to them. Like, we're going to die if we don't do this. And like, what a commentary on if you don't uphold the gender norms of the world, you could have your life and entire being threatened if you leave that safe world of just adhering to the gender norms. Finally, we get the 7Ds performance. Something about a misogynistic boy band eating every boy band up I've ever seen in my life doesn't sit right with me. If you're looking for peak Bratz content in which you've never seen a Bratz movie before and you're like, what can I expect from the Bratz movies of the early 2000s? I suggest you watch this scene. Or if you have a friend who's interested in learning more, send them this scene. It's the perfect representation of what they can expect in every other Bratz movie. And now we have the Wicked Queen who is... <sighs> Someone I love a lot. She's funny, she's witty, she knows what she wants. Why does she have to be so pretty? Maybe she has a zit. Quiet. I'm scheming. Mirror, mirror in the hand. Who's the fairest in the land? And it's a 1950s newscaster. Uh, oh, wicked queen, though fair ye be, Snow White's fairer far than thee. Who came up with this? A genius? Yes. I love it. I love it. I never know what to expect. What's going on? What is the eras here? We don't know. Oh, is it the fifth? No, it's not the 50s. This stuff wasn't happening. No, it wasn't the fifth. <laughs> All the while, Jade quits. She's sick of this. She'd rather die than take this disrespect. <laughs> She's walking for a while and her and Chadwick are like, I'm so hungry. And Chadwick's like, you left. This is your fault. And Jade? My parents took me to a French restaurant once and the frog legs tasted just like chicken. Jade, who wrote this? I want to give you a kiss. So instead of a forbidden apple, we have forbidden grapes. And Jade's like, I'm so hungry. I'll eat these even if they are poison, which I understand that. I would eat poison if I got really hungry too. I do get to that point. Luckily, the three other girlies finally find Jade. The queen is like, you ruined everything. And they start running from the queen. It's a whole thing. And then they run into the witch who got let out because the crow was like, oh, I got convinced. Sorry. And then the two broads now are fighting because they're both wanting to kill the children. And during their little brawl, they push them into a well. And they start by saying, well, well. Well? Well? And I was like, okay, it's gonna be like, well, well. And then they'll push them into the well and they'll be like, well, 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 well. They just said, well, well. Why didn't they finish? Well, well, well. That arc is complete. Now we have Sasha as Little Red Riding Hood. And they're like, how are we going to find her? Where is she? And the gnomes are like, oh, she's over there. Yeah, we sublet the house to her a few years ago when she retired. I'm sorry, this was made for adults. There's no way children knew what subletting was. Come a little closer to your old grandma, won't you? I truly have never hated anything more than the wolf character in this movie. That is the most uncomfortable voice acting I've ever experienced in my entire life. People have discussed the gnomes. The gnomes, wow, that's so crazy. They were a boy band. This is where I say it's obscene. 
You know what I mean? Now all I need is a little girl to wash it down. Do you know what I mean now? And the girlies find Sasha and they're like, oh, maybe they're friends. And then they realize they're not friends. So they start running and they're like, wolves can't climb trees. So they just climb the tree because, you know, they're really good at climbing. They can just climb. Like, where'd they learn to climb like this? I would like to take a little class, perhaps. And the wolf is just going through all these scenarios in which he can take them down. I could always chop the tree down. Finally, as Sasha and the girlies are about to get eaten by the wolf, she's like, I actually do respect Red Riding Hood. I thought it was so much smarter than Little Red Riding Hood, but I totally blew it. And then they start bullying the wolf. Jeez, he sure is slow. Yeah, what's taking you so long? And then they pull this crazy move and somehow get him into the well also. <gasps> It seems like the girlies are having a lot of fun in the well, forming alliances in the well. But my dear friend here is much wickeder than I. Oh, no, no, no. You wanted Snow White taken out. So now we're three for three. And the last story we have is Yasmin is Cinderella. So now the girlies are on the hunt for Yasmin and they run into Rumpelstiltskin the Onion and Goldilocks the Stump, who have sort of accepted their fates in their new forms. And then we cut to the evil stepmom and stepsisters who are so offensively French. You left the broom in the middle of the floor. And I have something to take up with Bratz corporate. Why were the Tweevils not the evil stepsisters in this? That would have been perfect. So Yasmin, she's doing some reverse psychology. She's like, I don't even want to go to the ball. I got to sweep some stuff. And evil stepmom is getting a little bit suspicious. So she's like, maybe we should just stay here and not go to the ball at all because I have a feeling Cinderella has secret money she has stashed away and she's going to try and escape when we're gone and I want that money so we're actually not going to go to the ball anymore imagine being that driven by money I wish I was that driven by money I'd probably be way less stressed out also the stepsisters are I've never seen characters like this in an animated form before. I'll just say that. <laughs> Chadwick kind of explains to Yasmin what she needs to do in order to get everyone freed, which is she has to go to the ball. She has to like do the slipper thing and the prince has to fall in love with her. You know, the big three. So Yasmin's like, oh, this is actually kind of hard. Like Yasmin gave up kind of fast. She's very empathetic towards Cinderella at this point. And it also looks like she's wearing Crocs. Does anyone have comments on that? So then we cut back to the gnomes. They're headed to the ball to perform and the wolf and the two queens get out, which isn't good for the group. So then Yasmin comes back inside and the evil stepmom's like, actually, you're going to come with us to the ball and you're going to look like shit. So Yasmin and crew are headed in a carriage and the carriage crashes. And one of the twins says something. Cinderella, la grande butt had to come with. <gasps> I had to replay it so many times because I really couldn't understand what they had said. Cinderella Le Grand Butt, I think, is what she had said. So apparently the carriage crashed because it was way too heavy. It was not supposed to have an extra person in it, even though they are so pissed at Cinderella, even though they told her to come with whatever classic. And Yasmin is told to lead the way through the forest to get to the ball. While this was all happening, the carriage crash and all that, the girlies had a plan with Goldilocks and Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> What's wrong, Goldie? Yeah, uh, Bertha's the name. And just look at what he's done to me. Ooh, that awful prince, that's who. So Goldilocks is crying that she was like, I was his fiance. He wouldn't sign a prenup. He's trash, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he wanted you to sign a prenuptial agreement? Prenup? I think I learned what the prenup was last year. How was a child going to know that? He turned me into a stump. He's a sorcerer, whatever. He accused me of being a gold digger and turned me into an onion. This is how they got the stepmom and stepsisters to just to leave. Okay, so that's good. So now after all of this, Yasmin calls the fairy godmother. She gets her glass slippers. She gets her cute dress. Yasmin suggests that the fairy godmother use the rest of her magic to turn Rumpelstiltskin and Goldilocks back into their original selves. And then they attack the witch. And she doesn't have a one. Let's put it down in the well so the girls steal the horses from the original carriage and they're headed to the ball and for some reason at the ball the bouncer is a greaser 
which is very interesting. So they're trying to sneak into the ball and then everyone's freaking out because apparently the wolf is at the ball. Wait, what happened to the queen? I'm ravenous. Everyone's freaking out, running out, blah, blah, blah. And he starts attacking Sasha and Yasmin uses her glass slipper to throw and hits and knocks out the wolf. <laughs> So the prince is like, oh my gosh, my savior, my Cinderella, my savior. I love her so much. She is the best. I love her. I need to go find her. So this completes Cinderella Yasmin's arc. Case closed. The four uh, stories have come to an end. And they get zapped back into the real world. And they come back humbled. I had no idea how rough it was for those girls. And they were just like, wow, it's so crazy and funny how misogynistic the world is there. We never considered that. And finally, Chadwick's spell gets broken. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to see what is Chadwick gonna look like? He said he was a handsome prince. He was a handsome prince. Really, he just got his crown back. And now he's like, I'm a handsome prince. And Chadwick has the same voice as the teacher who is kind of alluded to being the keeper the whole time. Ladies, it's showtime. Which is a fun little meta thing. And then we get the final song. And I wanna circle back to this, to my first point saying that I didn't like the song. This is why I said, hold your notes till the end. With the context of the entire film, I take back what I said about the intro song because I actually love the song now, especially at the end. And that's the end of the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching with me today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope we had a fun time together. Um, you can check out my Patreon, it's linked below. You don't have to, obviously. No pressure. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support always. You can follow me on Instagram at Jordy McNeil. I'm there the most often. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, what's this? I received a prophetic vision <laughs> that if you subscribe, you will. Talent, genius, and divine. Yeah. What he said. 